What's up guys, Vitor Pneum here, welcome back to my channel and in today's video we are going to talk about my top 5 cinematic lighting setups and techniques using just one light. And if you stick around to the end of this video, I'm also going to give you guys a little bonus tip that will drastically improve the quality of each lighting setup that we are going to talk today. I just want to start this video off by saying thank you so much to each and every one of you that are here watching these videos. I really appreciate you being here, leaving comments and smashing the like button. And if you are new here, you might want to consider hitting that subscribe and notification bell buttons because that way you will know when I upload new videos. So when it comes to making videos, lighting is one of the most, if not the most important skill that you should be learning in order to achieve that cinematic quality footage that everybody loves. And when I was first starting out, I didn't have any clue about lighting. I didn't have any lights. And when I actually got my first lights, guess what? I didn't know how to use them properly. But that was about to change. And when I actually convinced myself that lighting is more important than the actual camera that you're using, oh man. That changed the whole game for me and I started to see the results that I always wanted to achieve. Well, I know that for most people, lighting is not the funniest skill to learn. And as videographers, we'd rather buy a new lens or a new camera instead of investing in lighting gear. That's just how it is. But I got some good news for you. You know, nowadays you can get a very cheap and yet very high quality key light with a softbox and a tripod and you're all set to start making your videos look more cinematic. For me, I use the Godox SL60W, which is this very cheap key light that I got here. And I use it together with a deep parabolic softbox and the C-Stand. And that's the lighting gear that we are going to be using in today's video. I'm gonna drop links in the description below for this gear if you guys wanna check it out. Well, the first thing you wanna do is making sure that you have your softbox mounted on your key light. And yes, it's absolutely necessary to have a softbox or some kind of diffusion to make these techniques work properly. Because when you use diffusion, light becomes much more soft and flattering. And the more diffusion you have, the better. So without further ado, let's talk about the top 5 cinematic lighting setups and techniques using just one light. Number 1 is top-down lighting. So using the C-Stand, we're gonna place the light exactly above our subject. And the light is gonna come straight down. gives you a pretty dramatic and cinematic look, so it's not appropriate for everything. But this works really well for things like music videos or documentaries, and you often see this in a ton of feature films as well. It's a really cool, interesting look, and I really like it. Number two is paramount or butterfly lighting. And in order to achieve it, we're basically gonna take that previous top-down lighting and we're gonna move it a little bit towards the front of our character and then tilt it about a 45 degree angle. And it's called Paramount because this technique was very much used in the past by Paramount Pictures when it came to shoot their company headshots. And it's also called Butterfly because of the butterfly-shaped shadow that appears under the nose when using this lighting technique. So this is more of a beauty setup. And because it's often used for fashion, glamour and makeup purposes, this may be your go-to lighting technique if you want to make someone look very beautiful. Now, if we move the light slightly to one side of our subject, for about 20 to 40 degree angle from our camera, that butterfly shadow becomes more of a side nose shadow. And that's our lighting setup number three, which is called loop lighting. Loop lighting can give a portrait a subtle interest and depth, while still maintaining a bright and well-lit look. 
This technique is perfect for rounder faces because it makes the character's face look slimmer and longer. And this setup is not too dramatic and not too flat either, so it makes the perfect balance between both worlds. And because of that, this is probably the most versatile lighting technique and it can be used for pretty much everything. Number 4 and my personal favorite lighting setup is Rembrandt lighting. It's called Rembrandt because it was originally used by a painter called Rembrandt that used this lighting technique in many of his paintings. And this dramatic lighting technique from his paintings uses the sharp contrast between light and dark. So in order to achieve it, we just need to take that previous loop lighting setup and move it to about 45 to 65 degree angle from our camera. And because I have white walls, I had to place a black blanket as a negative fill to prevent the light from bouncing off from the wall to the darker side of my subject's face. When we do that, one side of the face stays lit very nicely and the other side becomes darker. But we create a little triangle of light in the darker side of our subject's face. And that's how we know that we have achieved Rembrandt lighting. This is probably the most iconic lighting setup used in Hollywood films. And it's a really great setup to use in any kind of cinematic or dramatic work. I really like this technique, it's a really cool, interesting look. And finally, number 5 is split lighting. And it's called split because it lights up half of our subject's face while keeping the other half completely in the dark. And this lighting technique is quite easy to achieve. We just need to place the light to one side of our subject and we want the light to be at a 90 degree angle from our camera. And because it's very, very dramatic, it doesn't work for everything. For example, I wouldn't make a corporate interview using the split lighting. But it works really well for sports and athletes promo videos, music videos or narrative films. Because it gives you a very dramatic look and it offers a sense of mystery and artistic feel to your scene. It also gives a sense of power and assertiveness to your talent. And now a little bonus tip for you guys. So if you want to push these lighting techniques to the next level, you just need to add other light sources to create much more interesting looks. What I like to do is add a RGB light to introduce some color to my scenes. A really great way to do that is placing a RGB light behind our subject. That way we create a really interesting look in the background. For you to get an idea, here's some examples of the same lighting techniques we just talked about, but this time with the RGB light in the background to introduce some color to our scenes. So there you go guys, 5 different ways to light your scenes. We have top down lighting, we have paramount or butterfly lighting, we have loop lighting, we have Rembrandt lighting and finally we have split lighting. So if you want a more dramatic and cinematic look, then top down, Rembrandt or split lighting may be the way to go. However, if you're more into fashion and shooting models, then you might want to consider using the paramount or butterfly lighting. And finally, if you're looking for a more all around and versatile lighting technique that works almost for everything, then you might want to go with loop lighting. These are all great ways to light different scenarios. Again, for me, my personal favorite is Rembrandt lighting, but I'm very curious to know what's your personal favorites guys so go ahead and leave a comment below with your personal favorite lighting technique or any questions you may have i would love to hear your thoughts and i will do my best to get back to each and every one of you as soon as possible and that's it guys i really really hope you like this video i hope you find it helpful don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you aren't already smash that like button because that really helps me and i will see you guys in the next video